Um, thank you all so much for joining us today. We are the team formerly known as Abstract, and we have picked uh, antibiotic resistance as our project. Uh, when it first got brought up pretty early in the process, uh, several of us had had at least some level of exposure to it in other courses, and so we thought it was something we could really get behind. Um, it turns out that you know, antibiotic resistance is a big problem. Uh, it's been in the news a lot lately, 23,000 deaths last year, almost 2 million uh, infections, over $20 billion cost to healthcare industry, and that's been growing. It was like 14,000 in 2009 or something like that. So it's a problem that's been getting worse. Uh, the way we chose to address it is through trying to get people to adhere to their prescriptions better. There's a lot being done in stewardship programs and attempts to uh, doctors prescribing better, uh, incentivizing new methods, and we thought that the best way we would be able to tackle it is to target uh, people that are already been prescribed their antibiotics and aren't finishing them, uh, because that's a particularly bad problem with our age group. It was over 50% of people that didn't finish their antibiotics in the age group of 18 to 24 did so because they felt better. And so that's the way we chose to try to do this. Um, and so now we're going to explain a little bit more how we're planning on doing that. Uh, so we put this together to show sort of the evolution of the project also. We started looking at reminder systems, moved on to the idea of using blitz or packs that would pass the information. That got ruled out as a logistics became too complicated. Um, so now we're doing a two-tiered approach. We're trying to target smaller pharmacies with stickers that would go on the top of the bottles, like you see, um, that would encourage people to finish the, their course their antibiotics. Um, and then we are hoping to uh, convince CVS to put some sort of graphic on the back of their bags that would educate people about antibiotic resistance and encourage them to finish. Um, for the, the sticker campaign, uh, we've gone, we've been sort of kicking around a bunch of slogans. Um, the one that we seem to like the best is finish strong, uh, finishing this bottle helps save 20,000 lives every year. Um, and then for the CVS bag, we've actually gotten a designer on board who's helping us work with it. Um, these are some preliminary designs that I can pull these off for this yeah. presentation. Yeah, um, we, this was the first round. We had a meeting with him this weekend, and we picked back a couple of ideas um, just to pass these around. But the graphic of the pill bottle is the one that he gravitated towards. So we sent it back to him and asked him to work on a graphic with that pill bottle and the slogan that I wrote on the sticky note over there, um, which I now can't read to you because I just handed it over. So sorry about that. Is, would be all, all of these works with your own? Yes. Okay. Um, and then, well, that's the product. So, so the steps we're taking to validate whether this can actually have an impact. Um, so for our, um, in, in America, four out of five Americans are prescribed antibiotics every year, so that's a lot of people. Um, CVS, they already have actually, uh, so they're rebranding right now as CVS Health, so they have a ton of new um, initiatives that they're taking on to improve community-based health, um, and one of their initiatives is um, targeting adherence. So far, they've only been targeting chronic diseases, so um, getting people that have to take their antibiotics, or take, uh, some diabetes, medicine, or whatever it is, heart disease, every day for the rest of their life. Um, but they have not yet um, focused on short-term things like antibiotics. Um, and they are actually looking at new ways to um, rebrand their packaging to um, do this and to in encourage people to actually adhere to their doctor's prescriptions. Um, so we think that CVS will, is, a, is a really good partner in that. Um, and they also they fill 750 million prescriptions every year. So um, there's a large uh, market out there too, or a large group of people out there that we could actually impact through these bags. Uh, and additionally, we also have a, a survey that we sent out that we're still um, analyzing the results for. Um, but we have, so far we've had over 300 responses and we've asked them things from um, just gauging their knowledge of the problem with antibiotic resistance, of whether they think it's important to finish their antibiotics, of um, what will happen when they don't finish their antibiotics, and we're going to use, yeah, why they stop, and we're going to use that information to um, help workshop our um, slogans in the coming weeks before we uh, deliver our final product. Are you going 
want to see more about the survey later? We can. <laughs> Yeah, but we just we actually just sent out the survey like a week or two ago or a week ago. Plus a week. So we still have we are just getting in the data now. So we're planning on analyzing that um, as soon as we have access to it, and then um, we're going to use that to influence our final one. Okay, so I'm going to talk more about now who, who our target market is. Uh, specifically, as Colin mentioned, our target market is people who are taking antibiotics and they stop. And he said the main, and one of the main reasons is 50% is because they don't finish, uh, makes it feel better. So while with our, with our stickers and our bag, we're, we're reaching everyone who is using antibiotics, whether they finish it or not. So we're, we're, how are, we can actually specialize to the target market uh, by the sticker campaign. So we could have a variety of different stickers based on what we determine is will um, best reach our market. So for example, uh, based on the age, we realize that people age 18 to 24 hour age is most likely to stop taking again antibiotics. We could use like a cultural reference or some sort of uh, message that's specific to them. Also with our survey, which was like you said, the results aren't ready yet. Uh, we, we had one of the questions was like, what would be the most motivating to you to, con uh, to, to continue finishing your antibiotics? We gave like a list of like 10 things and they were supposed to pick their top three. So whether it's um, the financial cost to you, financial cost to society, or the, the health, because it impacts you know, like your life, your friends, family's life, or whatever message specifically spoke to them. Uh, and what we really like about our stickers is that if you conform to the idea that like, we're in an uh, attention economy and people don't really like pay attention to all the marketing and all the messaging at them, and so they, they, they don't they look like blur it out, like the stickers inherently playful and unassuming, they're more likely to give it a chance and actually read it and actually see what it has to say versus like some memoir or something. And the, the bag of the so the sticker would have a lot of different variations and a lot of flexibility on what the design is, while the bag would be you know, one that's not a little can agree on, except but it would be a more comprehensive thing in that it would be an image, an easily digestible image of the complex issue of antibiotic resistance and how the and how that happens, and it would be a simple image that anyone can understand. And so the main thing with our target market is, that, is the idea of when we're targeting them. We're targeting them at a critical moment when they're actually buying the antibiotics and therefore we're most likely to use them to make a decision of whether or not to continue taking it at like the most prime time for them to actually like when they're actually making a decision of whether or not to continue to have our information and suggestions like whether they're successful. Yeah, so once we have the two designs now, uh, based on the crit and based on our project projection, um, engage our audience to uh, local pharmacies. So we found there, uh, there are 19 uh, two day pharmacies in DC who are target. Um, aside from that, there are also about five or six uh, main local pharmacies in Georgetown that we want to target too. So we probably had conversations with the Georgetown Pharmacy here. Um, and they told us that they like the idea, but they don't need it because they already have stickers themselves that do the same thing. So it's just about this idea of saying that people are using this in pharmacies to remind people to take the medication and all their things. Um, so moving forward, we want to definitely um, put these two uh, designs for the bag and for the sticker sent to local and national pharmacy chains. And then from there, we have uh, probably bring about like 10 samples or 10 stickers for the sample um, on the national medication models for the local and national pharmacies and see if it works. And so we get feedback from them uh, based on the customer um, here level. So if they call back saying we need the medication refills, if they uh, uh, the medication model models, then we know, we know, uh, we know the, 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 the awareness of the topic has reached them, which might work. Um, I guess we also you know, create surveys and um, uh, social media campaigns to kind of judge the numbers of the audience and see whether or not they really take a shot or just take a hold of this whole campaign to uh, all the medication gains. Um, aside from that, we already had kind of conversations with a local pharmacy called Morgan Care. Um, we want to follow them sometime too once we have more uh, ideas on what we want to uh, design for the actual stickers and see if they can actually work with us um, in person to uh, implement one of the sticker ideas onto their own models. And that's about it for our strategy. Um, yeah, so another reason why we steered away from like, education campaigns or propaganda was we wanted to work with pharmacies because um, we thought we could reach more people that way instead of doing the campaign by ourselves. So we narrowed our scope down to just the stickers and the bags. And in terms of the content of the stickers, we wanted to um, disrupt patients' medicine taking routine through these high impact, concentrated, um, this entry point. Um, and through this, change the way people think about taking antibiotics. So by associating the antibiotics with slogans like, 
finish strong, follow through. Another one we're considering is don't start to have healthy. So, yeah. Um, and so these slogans are bold and positive and actionable. And um, using these slogans, I think, would help disassociate, um, dissociate um, antibiotics from medicine you take as a chore and instead make finishing your prescription desirable. And so by changing people's attitudes and perceptions, we could increase adherence to antibiotics. So we look at other social campaigns which successful previously and find out most of the campaign they use uh, social media as a tool to spread their opinion, which is uh, not the same as our way. So uh, we find out most of the speakers on the labels, they usually only have a black and white, uh, maybe red or no, no like the CDS one. And uh, so we are gonna make it much colorful, like blue or green or something. And with very strong slogan like finish strong or something and uh, to get more attention to make people finish it very finish strong or to finish your prescription. And CBC told me about campaign which is very successful because they use the real people and real stories to talk about their what they want to do and to emphasize the credibility and uh, but the antibody is not as uh, very hazardous as tobacco, so we are going to use the, our strategy is to use the, uh, like a slogan just to finish this pill, because if you didn't finish the pill, you will maybe, you will generate more mass of the super power. Yeah, I think that's that's part of our goal is to get it like I mean 
literally one side, all it says is CVS Pharmacy. And so with some of the, the design idea is to, even if we do just get them once, we want it to be something that they see when they first get the bag. And they will at least look at it and read it once and get it. Hopefully their doctor has also mentioned this to them and it's just a reinforcement I'm going back to what Michael was saying. We did some research into successful tobacco campaigns, and point of sale marketing was a very big component of like anti-smoking, and people were much more perceptive of the anti-smoking uh, things when it was done at point of sale. And so that's kind of what we're thinking of this: is you're connecting like this is a bag you get when you give them the money for the prescription. Like I literally got this bag earlier today and saw people in front of me getting the bag as they gave their money. So we're hoping to connect it that way, and that's why we're hoping that we'll get them at least the once when they're first getting this information, when they're hopefully make their decision as to how they're going to proceed. Sorry, Rebecca, who did you see talk to at CVS about the bag? Oh, yeah, um, that's Caitlin. Caitlin talked to uh, yeah. the, the distributor of the bag. So CVS uses a, a different distributor called Grandpack, and so I called uh, Grandpack and I spoke with um, someone from there about the process, about how long it would take to implement a new PDF, things like that. I, I also I do think it's a brilliant strategy to, to figure out how to integrate into their existing workflow. Um, I, but I think there, there could be a longer term plan if, you, if you're using the stickers in other instances to prove the validity of that. Shows, you know, use that as an entry point into CBS and ultimately get them to adopt other workflows down the road. Um, you know, you're, it's unlikely to get them to change overnight, but if they bite on that idea, there's a chance they'll bite on something else if you prove the concept. So I want to take a look there on the statistics because I heard a couple of different things. Um, so I heard 18 to 24 year olds and I heard 50% not finishing and I heard not finishing because they felt better. Can somebody put those three, three numbers together for me? I couldn't tell if it was 50% of the people who did stop, stopped because they felt better. Yes. That, that did 50% of 18 to 24 year olds do that? 45% of 18 to 24 year olds did not finish their antibiotic prescription, okay. and then it's over 50% of the reason of those people that did not finish it is because they felt better. Got it. So, and you do. One of your ideas is to sort of target the 18 to 24 year old? That was, yeah. oh, sorry. Yeah, somebody else. Why did we talk to 18 to 24 year old? Just because they're, they're, they're um, the largest demographic to not complete their antibiotics. So like 45%. So the 55% of others is spread around a lot of age groups. It's not the elderly. Is that what Okay. Yeah, just the right people spread out. So, so, so your age group really is a yeah, uh, that's very interesting. Also, because they're longer, it's not a lasting effect. Nice point. So then, I wanted to also just ask for clarification on the on the bag thing. It also says, as an incentive, if you bring this in, you get something. Can you, you oh know, yeah. So that was an idea that the, the designer picked up to us. Oh. Um, that we then oh, nice. went back and said, no thanks. Okay. We want to keep it simple as possible. Perfect. Because so I was going to say that sounds very complicated. So. Yeah, that's <laughs> why. Really and the chance I'm going to keep the CVX bag and punch on it and bring it, it in. It's not going to happen. Yeah. I like your answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, design is that. So then can I also just um, felt more generally, and I think this is really cool. Um, I very much like how. You, you have explored some different areas of emotion in your different slogans. Um, I also love the finish strong. I, I think that's great. I like having something that is both altruistic, so it helps to save other people's lives, because it's that's surprisingly motivating for a lot of people. And then other times, talking about how it's your own health. You know, finish strong, don't settle for half healthy. I think that would be really cool, so unselfish. I mean, the selfish one. <laughs> I do want to just give a bit of feedback on the one, like imagine dying from the common cold. <laughs> that, that's, yeah. No, no, so I, I mean, I, I, I kind of love it. To, okay. Uh, but I do want to give us feedback. If it's on all CVS bags, as opposed to the labels are targeted to people who live with antibiotics, right? The bags are, I don't know, 95% of them are not going to be for antibiotics. And I look at that as the AIDS. Because, yes, anybody who's got immunosuppressant disease, is living that. 
and a friend to God for, so I wouldn't go there. And that was an earlier edition that we actually, we have this one and then we have this one, which is, um, yeah, I'll put you guys. Uh, these are both sort of the more negative messaging, because I didn't want to go on a positive route. Mm -hmm. um, this was like, because I took the guy with these powerful players, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had some issues, but it, we just like the design, so yeah, that's good. Yeah, okay, very helpful. Yeah, that one's more for the visual aspect. We liked how that one looked. Oh, it was fantastic. That's all Kate. Kate is our Kate's resident artist. Here's <laughs> artistic skills. Hey, rock on. Yeah, we're going to have to get Wow. I'm messing with John. I don't know, I feel like that is like a, an insert, maybe. Okay. Or, so, or something that gives more information. So let me say a, a number of things. Like, it's so loud, right? I mean, the things that I like hearing about, like when you're doing surveys, you're talking to pharmacists, you pick up the phone, you talk to the CVS distributor, outstanding. Just the fact that you understand the supply chain, there was a group last semester who hit a wall because they got confronted with that issue. Where does it fit into our supply chain? They were asked that by Coca-Cola, that no good answer, and the project, right? You guys thought through all that. Plus, you learn from other campaigns. It was wonderful to hear you talk about um, tobacco-free kids. Um, I, I like the fact that you haven't answered the question, why you? Why are you guys coming to them with this, right? Why aren't professionals coming to them? It's you because you're the age group that's, that, that's causing part of the problem, but you're also part of the age group that can help solve the problem. Great answer. Um, and also, you didn't cling to ideas. I know you guys shifted throughout the semester. You, you, you didn't, didn't have, you might have had a favorite, but you let it go, and you kept moving along to ideas and say, that's so So all that was great. Let me just start probing some of these things, okay? So on, on the surveys, you said you, you've already, did I hear you right, you've already had 300 responses to the survey? 386. So how did you select the people that you yeah. said? Yeah, who's being surveyed? So who, how did you select the people who's, who, I just want more info about it. We made a survey, we sent it out on Facebook, and we were like, we're going to fail our class if you don't answer this, and all of our friends like wrote back. Okay. So we had, yeah, yeah. Like names break down as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So at 300, you're starting to build up big enough numbers you can actually draw some preliminary conclusions. So is there anything that's starting to emerge about the slogans that you've chosen? Um, yeah. Um, actually, surprisingly, because we were expecting people more to gravitate towards the, like, it's going to cost you a lot of money and it's going to cost you your health. Um, but the ones that have consistently been most favored were it'll save, like, it'll help with the world's problem with antibiotic resistance and it'll help save your family. I do have a direct follow-up question to, to that. Um, are you collecting demographic data on the survey? Because, I mean, sending out on Facebook getting 300 responses is excellent, but there is a self-selection bias to people who are in your social networks or your <laughs> network's network yeah. and have regular access to Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. So you, there's, as long as you recognize that there's some limitation to the conclusions we can draw. Do you have uh, age, we have race, we probably I felt like it could have been a little much to say ask them like, to be socioeconomic type thing. Uh, but this is also in supplement to an actual study that we have, uh, which has uh, like generalized data from a large sample. Uh, so we just wanted to see from our like network what their reaction would be to our specific campaign and our specific. So I'm guessing we're talking specific. So, so I'm guessing this is actually prize territory. This model. And, and so there is, you know, CBS clearly uses it for branding and equipment, and they want it to be reinforced because that's something everybody's going to see when they stick the on. But there's also these instructions open, push, turn, close. I don't need those instructions, but they must be there for some reason, right? So whether a lawyer determined that that has to be, I have no idea. But uh, have you had the conversation yet? Uh, it'd be nice if you know before you go and talk to CBS whether there's some obligation to putting some of this information on the top. No, we haven't. No? Okay. Also, if you what if your what you say on top there gives a direction that conflicts with the label itself. Is there any is there ever a case where someone gets more antibiotics like than their need to take? The doctor says like, oh take the the rest are for if you get another UTI or something? Like, well I don't I have no idea. Like is there it's a case where you say like Yeah, I was about to say that's a terrible doctor. <laughs> so wait, but so I, I don't know. I'm asking, are you certain enough that like if everyone says yes, you can put you're going to put labels on it that convey that you should take everything in the bottle? Yes. And that like there's never be any instance where the label says something else that doesn't convey to take everything. 
I've heard that done with like pain pills, where they give more pain pills than you might need, but with antibiotics, that should not happen. Is, isn't this an issue with the bag idea? Right, so if they use one bag, right? Yeah. The bag is generic across everything, so it would disrupt how they do their business if they have to like select one antibiotic bag um, versus one for any, any other. Which is why we avoided that for that exact reason. Um, we wanted to make sure the messaging was clearly about antibiotics is the best way to target that. You know, that's something we thought about, and we sort of, that's why we didn't want to do generic, like, it's really important that you take all of your pills all the time, and wanted to be very clear about it being about the antibiotics. Because, yeah, we don't want you to feel like you're obligated to take all of the Vicodin if you feel better. Please stop. <laughs> so. Can I actually follow up on this line of question? So it's, if I understood you correctly, you're, you're aiming the bag idea for CVS, but the cigarette idea is only going through local pharmacists, is that right? Mm -hmm. So maybe for the bottle stick, the question is not about CVS's like legal constraints and preferences, but about how local druggists will consider their relationship with that's a big pharma or whatever, right? Like, mm -hmm. to, does like, you know, does Joe Anderson's pharmacy down the street put his supply in danger by covering over producers, products, instructions. I mean, we'll have to see on that. Just wait for that and think yeah. about it. You can't wait. Really and it's great that you're in conversation with the pharmacist, because yeah. I'm asking that. Can I? When did you said something, something about, um, I heard you right. The pharmacist, well, at least one of the pharmacists responded by telling me that they have stickers that say the same thing. So what are their stickers right now, and where are they putting them? So that was um, actually direction on the hospital pharmacy. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I, I actually was just the meeting though. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> that's why right. that's right. yeah. yeah. Um, the with Georgia Hospital Pharmacy, we, we called up and we spoke to like the manager of the pharmacy who said basically we think it's cool, but we already have something on our sticker that says it's important that you finish the bottle. So we don't really need it. Um, so do you know where that appears on the bottle? So it's it's like printed on the label. Um, and our thought was that once we have a good prototype of the sticker, oh, we could yes. go it's and on, say, look, well, yeah. 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 So yeah, we well, can go and say, look, there's yeah, difference yeah. in what you're doing. Yeah, so I've never noticed it, right? So that's just something right there. Okay. So, so they're, they're with you that this is an important message, but they just feel like they're already taking it. They feel it's redundancy. So we thought the best way to um, approach them again was with something that shows that it's not, as opposed to being like, no, no, please listen to us. So. Which is what, so like, um, and the rest of the back then, we'll talk about this, what you guys are going to deliver in a few weeks with the final project. But it seems like a lot of the stuff that I don't want to see are things you say that you're going to do. And uh, like some things you're waiting for in relationships to ensure the forms and things like But um, all the design we're talking about, the bottles and getting these to a different point where you can take them, they're not just them, like that, um, I would I would like to see it right now, but like at the very least by the end of the Semester would be more than just pencil sketches on the thing. And like, see the things that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Most of the things I've heard and ideas sound really awesome, but they're all purchased by, and we're going to, and we're going to design this, we're going to design that, we're going to have this social media campaign, we're going to do that. Like, there's a lot of that stuff that you can do right now, and I would expect to do the next step, right? And even like, the, like testing the, doing a survey to get feedback, I'm not sure if you guys what the questions are, but. Um, that's never going to be as effective as prototyping is getting it out. Like no data can show a pharmacist going to convince them to put the stickers on when they already think they have a, something on the label. Is it versus actually bringing in a prototype with a label or a sticker on top of it, something more a higher value. So, so can we say, pick one of them, make the stickers, or and then carry them in, uh, or however many? Yeah. We talked about this in the class consultation too, right? Like I was suggesting, you can sketch up a bunch of different versions of these, but at least bring one or two glossy versions to the local pharmacists, right? Because like part of their question will be about like quality. Like, does it stick? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. We had some problems with trying to actually get them done by like, um, we worked Sunday and yesterday on trying to get like the actual like label maker to print out those, you know, common bottle sizes, they just say here. Yeah. And antibiotics are going to be pretty much the same bottle size because you never get, you know, yeah. 
a hundred antibodies. Yeah. Anyway. Um, a few things um, that are more on the line of suggestions that maybe you thought of them. You talked to George Hill. Thank you. Thank you. Have you talked to CVS about if they end up going with uh, the bag uh, joining uh, on their CVS pharmacy online? I mean, I can imagine the sticker being a really cool graphic design on the web and then having a um, so a finish strong in you know, could be a really, and then, then you can do more background information. And one thing I really like about the whole approach you guys are taking is that it is about, it's a, it's a health campaign. It's not education or information either. So less is more, which is what I see here. People will tune out learning a lot about it, but they will absorb if you're presenting this a certain way. And the third thing is, the, the other thing I might suggest one of you trying to do during the next two weeks is check in with somebody from public health, and I can help with contacts, maybe over at Johns Hopkins. Um, so this is kind of getting back to the, the issue about sociodemographics. Um, so these seem really great to me, so I think they're just going to give you probably the all clear, but there are people who really specialize in what subpopulations who have earned mistrust of medicine might think of various campaigns. So you really want to do your due diligence on that. And maybe they can give you a thumbs up. And so, so much of your work has been based on, on research, so it's terrific. I, I love hearing that. Um, but one thing we didn't talk about yet is that it's how you settle on this positive, you call it the bold and positive approach, right? So there's, there's two generic approaches you can take in advertising in your bold and positive. You went bold and positive. So what, so what made you tilt that way? Was it just your instincts, or did you base that on some other campaigns that were successful? There was, I think, multiple reasons. One of them is just um, working with pharmacies. They're not going to want you to associate negative things with their products. So they're not going to, like one of the things we were talking about, kind of as a joke in the first grade, was, you know, like antibiotic resistance, don't finish this, and your like, grandma's going to die because, like, they're in a population that's more susceptible to getting infections. So, um, so on that particular point, so is that something you discuss <laughs> with pharmacists, or you just you just assume that they, they want to stay away from something that's negative? That was pure assumption. So yeah, you can discuss with them. And you said other reasons, there were other reasons why you went this route of bold and positive. Yeah, and some of the rhetoric guys. I mean, you can always, you know, we actually, um, in our first uh, in class, me and Michael talked about um, having like the desk chair, or you can like, you know, even lose money at that point, which is definitely a valid point. I feel like you want to go on a more positive route because when you think of medication, you want to get better, right? You don't associate it with like, like um, um, what she said, with like negative words that deal with, you know, getting like worse or being like under some kind of stress. So, um, it's a possibility we could actually, you know, even make series about that. But I feel like our route was more of a positive route because it felt like it inspired you more to, to be better, to get better. Um, I believe it's more about uh, you. So, so it sounded like instinct is what you wrote in this direction, or is there some, some other campaign that, you, that did bold and positive that you thought that was particularly successful? You know, most of the, the sort of public health campaigns that we ran across that were really acclaimed were actually more negative, but they were all about Recycle because, like, or don't throw away your trash. They were all sort of phrased like, don't do this. And so we, um, that, I mean, we. So that's right, well, contradiction, right? So you're saying that you, you have recognized that fear has worked in a number of these campaigns, yet despite that, you went with your instinct and it went bold and positive. Why? Well, part of, I mean, that's in the Facebook <coughs> survey. People uh, that have responded, once again, self selecting, there's a some caveats there, but their motivations seem to be primarily positive. Um, this is something that doctors are prescribing to them, and uh, once again, I mean, we'll be more than happy to talk to pharmacies more about um, going negative, but when it comes to medication, I mean, you already spoke about some people's inherent distrust with medicine and stuff like that, that um, framing it in a negative light would be a much tougher sell to get it out there than going positive. And then on some of our other 
designs that have more like information. There is some scary information on there to do that, but we want people to associate antibiotics as like a good thing that this is going to get you better and not like a better be scared if you don't finish. Can I just weigh in on Slake's question here? Because it's an empirical issue what motivates people. You can talk and dance and think and they're okay. It's an empirical question and there's a great literature on this. And by my understanding of the literature, I don't know, I don't specialize in this though, I pretend I do, totally supports what you guys are, so your instincts may be right, but I think Slate's right to push for some empirical basis so that when you're selling it, you can say, look, here's the study from Harvard School of Public Health that says if you go with fear, people go to cognitive dissonance, and if you go with aspiration, people open up. So, and again, I can help steer you to some of the literature if that's helpful, but send one of you to the library in the next two weeks and it'll make your case safe. So the, the survey data was really more nice too, because that, you had that direction before. If you're asking actually what in the process, what drove to it, from what I saw, like the best explanation you give is on the sign outside of the store. It's like no, it's it's like, no, no, I know, I'm saying, I agree, like that, to sell it, to pitch it, but like there is an answer to what actually, I think, to what actually like, Row, or the answer to row is like it's there's no one thing. Because I've been watching you guys go through a bunch of different iterations, a bunch of different things. I don't think there's one point. There's you guys go through a bunch of different things, you are doing different things. Are you can I just weigh in on that? I think the point is you want large N. You want large data samples yes. that are sociodemographically diverse to decide the empirical question of what motivates human animals. And, and there are examples of really bold and positive public health campaigns. Even you started to, you, you went David, but you started this psychocycling, which has been pitched in a very bold, positive way. I mean, you could you know, see images of green fields and windmills and you know, a clean future, right? Yeah. So I mean, even from the, the example that you started to cite, you can come up with other ones. But I completely agree with, with Megan and Slate that find some of those Find an empirical data, and then find some examples so that you can say, look, it's worked in this case, it, it's likely to work in our case. Okay. I could add to that. One of the um, part of your analysis, it started to emerge in your comments a moment ago, um, is that it's maybe not just about both the positive versus negative, it's about what you're trying to encourage people. I'm trying to do two things in this case. One, sell CBS on actually, uh, so to pitch to CBS, two, that can be effective. It might be <laughs> yeah, well, it might be effective at like being convincing too, but they're probably not the same thing. I don't know. I don't know, maybe they are like it. But they're, I don't know if you, you, you may not be able to do either well if you try to do both. Why don't we just bring both into the meeting and let's see if like, it's like, Because they're going to like, shit doesn't look like that. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but for my, I mean, I, I <clears throat> agree with everything that you're saying about making it bold and making it stand out, but just from a pure pitching standpoint, if you walk into a meeting clearly understanding the CBS brand, you're going to get far farther with them um, than you will coming in and trying to convince them, oh, this is, this is a PSA that you should care about because it's important and everything. Coming in saying, hey, listen, we've done our research on your brand. We know where you're at. We know where you're going. And we think we have an idea that fits with that brand, you know, with that brand image and everything. I think from a pitching standpoint, that's the way to go. And that's what I would recommend. My only comment on the design is um, if CBS doesn't buy it, you could turn around and pitch this to Target because this looks like Target branding to me. Target does stuff. They already like it. But so. so <laughs> That makes me think that they might not, it might be the opposite, that right? they might like feel like, oh, wait, so you want us, our brand, without any of our research or legal team on it, to adopt something that looks like our brand and everything else, versus like sell us real estate on, sell another organization or effort that's not their brand, that if it gets in some sort of trouble or if it is, like gets bad PR, that's not as directly back to them because they're just offering real estate on its back. They're not going to do wait, it without approval. So, yes, have a meeting with CBS and see what happens. Fine. Uh, where are you with that meeting? I think I sent an email. So we, uh, no, we drafted the email and then we decided to pull up and then get to Florida. And then we drafted it yesterday. And, and, and uh, there were like, uh, delay and get some feedback. So you could favor uh, uh, ABC on that so they know when it goes out. Okay, and then we'll get involved in a couple of days or something like that. Um, what I like that you did a lot of research.
research about CBS, which is terrific, and, and we will put a ton of CBS about it. So the CBS has a new campaign targeting adherence. So what did you learn about that campaign? What, what's going on with that right now? Um, in their CSR report, which is like a comprehensive report that they put out every year, uh, their most recent one, they're, I guess, putting out the 2014 one right now, but 2013 is their most recent, that's they published. Um, and they're, they have, it's really long, but they have uh, a whole page on uh, why adherence is important and then what they're specifically doing to target adherence. Um, and all of it so far um, is targeted at chronic disease. Um, and I've seen, actually I saw on like a, just a little pop-up yesterday, a new like campaign they have that's like, you're with one day and it's like the one day you find out that you're gonna have to take medicine the rest of your life. And like, it's, they're really focusing on that. Um, and we think that we can kind of bridge a gap in there. So, what are you so, so what is it they're doing? So, so they should have to demonstrate the concern in what you read, but what, is, what are the steps they're actually taking? Right, they're working with doctors um, and how they prescribe. They were kind of big on that one. Um, they are doing stuff with general like information and kind of trying to help people that are gonna have to take medicine the rest of their lives. And they're doing stuff with, um, they want to re, like do stuff with their labels basically, but they, Ah, okay, that's where so far, I don't so, know what they've done. Oh, yeah, it was like a bullet point on their report okay. that they haven't. If I'm not mistaken, Murray's refill reminders too, isn't it? Yeah, like if you got a yeah. refill, they'll remind you and say, hey, you should be out here soon. Do you have any emails or? Right. Uh, they text and they call. I get so the so, so, so they have access to the people who are getting their prescriptions by email? Only if the patient says it. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. There, are, there are other avenues that just pops up. Okay, thanks. Okay. Nice. I've got, so I noticed on a couple of these, um, it says finishing this bottle helps save 23,000 lives every year. <laughs> Why not just say 100,000? Or like a million? I mean, that could be more motivating. Just because 23,000. Is that in the United States? Yeah, in the United States. So why not expand it? And, or, or why not just flood it? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this isn't an education camp. Over time, right? Yeah. We're not giving them a test. We're trying to get them to do something. That does actually save lives. So why why wouldn't you guys fudge or you know, use fuzzier numbers? OK, so again, going off your instinct in that, you research on this one. Um, but I pay much more attention to specific numbers than I do to large scale, like one million, one million islands, what is that? Well, it's like 23,000, and at least be like, why that number? Like, that's a very specific, but that, that, that's not, like, that's me just talking right now, so I can't back that up with anything. Uh, we also purposefully steered away from some of the higher estimates that even we think, like, look funny, because um, different groups have different estimates, and I don't know if it's because like a lot of us have like a sciencey background, but when we see something that doesn't look right or seems high, like our natural tendency is to be like, I don't, I don't think they're quite telling you the truth or something like that. Can I ask a hypothetical? If you guys did the research and just turned out that putting a higher number would be more effective, would you then use it or would you still have reasons not to? If the number was true or if the number was false? True. If you could just this is, this is Socrates on rhetoric right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to say an answer. I mean, you guys are trying to say lies. I am in the bio right? class. Thank you, speak up, baby. <laughs>
communication and right, the, the people to contact with, place it and do whatever else they want. You might just be able to bypass it, ask to put some real estate on it from the people who made it up. Because it also says safe and friendly, you think CDS on the inside and the bottom too. You think CDS ask them to print safe and friendly on it? Like, and then it's recycled. So we're almost done? Yeah. So um, the focus, I think, if, if I can just try to summarize, I'm hearing a lot of positives on the idea, on the process, on the research. And by the way, the presentation is very good too. Yeah. Stay focused in this next two weeks. You've got you guys a lot of feedback. Be very, very intentional on how you use the two weeks. Divide and conquer, eyes on the prize. I think I think it's